from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Special coverage sponsored by AWS Global Partner Network. Hello, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. We're virtual this year, we're not in person, we have to do it remote, but theCUBE is virtual and I'm John Furrier, your host here with Cube Virtual. Our next guest, Sarah Cooper, who's the general manager of the IoT solutions with AWS. Sarah, great to see you. Uh, saw you last year in person, in real life. Now we're remote, but thanks for coming on the Cube. Thanks, John. Always good to be on the Cube, and great to see you again. I don't know how many years it's been from <laughs> our initial meeting, but it's been a few. Well, we got a, we got a cube search engine. You were on in 2016, but we saw each other last year, uh, and when we were riffing on the IoT news, a lot of great stuff. I mean, from Speed Racer all the way down through all the industrial stuff, even more this year. Uh, but two things that jumped out at me this year was the Carrier uh, keynote, um, and also the BlackBerry kind of the automotive thing. Again, it speaks to kind of two mega trends. Obviously, the automotive we'll get to in a second, but the Carrier announcement was really interesting. You guys did this thing and I was so impressed with the cold chain uh, product. It was the connected cold chain it was called. Um, this is where the <laughs> carrier, which is known for air conditioning. This is critical IOT devices that saves the world. The vaccines involved. Take a minute to explain what the cold chain, connected cold chain project was. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we worked closely and are working closely with carrier on a, on a product called Lynx. Now, Cold Chain, um, as Dave Gitlin, the CEO of Carrier, described in Andy's keynote, um, is about moving perishable goods, things that need certain temperature ranges from point A to point B. And that usually, that sounds simple. Uh, that's not quite so simple. It's usually, you know, at least, you know, five to 25 hops, sometimes as much as 40. Um, and these are, these are perishable goods. This is food, this is medicines, this is vaccines, very hot topic at the moment. And today, you know, you're moving between ships and those big tractor trailers, and you've got warehouses with refrigeration units, and you've got retail grocery stores with refrigeration units. These are all different data sources that are owned by different, you know, members of that supply chain, that value chain end to end. And so what Lynx does is it pulls the data from all of the carrier equipment and then pulls that data and looks across all of this information using things like machine learning to draw inference and relationship. And then be, allows us to be able to make smart recommendations on things like routes or if you know, a particular produce um, might need to stop before its original vent to make sure it's got long shelf life. It allows us basically to provide that transparency end to end, which is so difficult because of the number of players. And it's in part due to Curia's breadth of products. And then, you know, with AWS, we're bringing the, tech, the digital technology side. We got the IoT, the ML, a lot of the big data uh, processing pieces. Um, so we're really excited about that. And, I have to say, it's one of the easiest projects to hire for. When you talk about making sure that we're able to reduce food waste from the current 30 to 40%, um, or that we're working on making sure that vaccines are, eff are efficacious by the time that they get to a vaccination site, um, yeah. engineers sign up pretty quickly. <laughs> You know, the cliche, you know, mission-driven companies are always kind of like, oh, people love to work for mission-driven companies. In this case, you have a project and group that literally is changing the world. If you think about just the life savings on the, on the, on the uh, vaccine side, that's obvious. We all can relate to that now uh, with COVID on full display, but just in terms of energy consumption uh, on food waste to perishables, if you look at the costs involved to society, hunger around the world, uh, and just food is just wasted and there are people starving, right? So when you start looking at this as an instrumentation problem, right, it gets really interesting. So you mentioned supply chain, value chain. This is IOT, potentially even blockchain. Again, this is a, a key change the world area. You guys have a multi-year deal with Carrier, so validation. <laughs> what does that mean specifically? You guys are going to provide cloud services. Um, what's that all mean? Yeah, so we, we've... We're bringing our engineering talent as is Carrier. This is a co-development. So we're actually jointly developing together. They bring a lot of the domain expertise. They bring, you know, 
years and years of experience in in refrigeration um, and in you know track and trace of these products and and we bring engineers who have vast experience at scale in these kinds of, of inference challenges and, and data management and data quality and so it's really kind of bringing the best of both worlds and you see this happening more and more I think in general where you've got a, a company like AWS that has strong digital expertise and, and a history of product innovation working with customers that are very innovative themselves, um, but typically have been innovative in, in you know, traditional hardware products and the two worlds coming together to make sure that we can really solve some of the, the big challenges that are facing our society today. And um, again, you know, it's great to wake up in the morning and get to work on a project that has that kind of impact. Well, before we move on to the whole BlackBerry automotive thing, which is another whole fascinating thing, share something that people might not know about this carrier project that's important. Um, whether it's something anecdotal, something that you know, um, that's important. What, what's, what's, what else is there that's game changing that you think is important to point out? Yeah, you know, I don't know that when we first started working with Courier on, on scoping this project that I had really thought through all the different players that are touched by cold chain. Um, certainly we've got a number of them within Amazon with our, our fulfillment technologies and our grocery stores. That, that's logical. Um, you think about the shippers and people who are out, you know, um, farming and, and uh, you know, I mean, crab meat is something that moves in, in these big refrigerated containers. But actually, there's, there are transportation companies, there's drivers of these big rigs that need to make sure that they're being, that they have fuel consumption management. You've got customers, you know, really kind of throughout that piece, freight forwarders. And so really the breadth of the people that are touched, not just you and I as consumers of, of perishable goods and fruits and produce um, and medicines, but also really that full end-to-end -end ecosystem. Um, and that's that's both the exciting part from a, from a business standpoint, but also the exciting part from a technology standpoint. Well, it's great work and I applaud you for it. It's one of those things where uh, food waste isn't just a supply chain, it impacts the rest of the world because you're more efficient. You can distribute food to other places where people are hungry. And um, and yeah. just its overall impact is a huge trickle effect. So uh, impact is huge. Okay, now let's talk about um, the automotive piece because last year we had on the cube folks from BlackBerry and I remember them came on like, BlackBerry, isn't that the phone that went extinct by the iPhone? No, no, there's a whole nother IoT automotive thing around IV. Uh, IVY, uh, Intelligent Vehicle Data Platform. You guys just announced a multi-year agreement with them to develop that product combined with some of the IoT and machine learning. Could you take a minute to explain what this relationship is? What does it mean? And what does it mean for the industry? Yeah, it, it's it's similar to the carrier relationship. You know, we are, we're engineering together. Um, in this instance, uh, QNX, which is a division of BlackBerry, is in 175 million vehicles. I mean, just think about that. They're running under the covers and they are they are a safety security layer and a real-time operating system. So, you know, when you think about all of the, the products really end-to-end, -end, and QNX isn't just in automotives, it's in nuclear power plants, it's in manufacturing automation. It's one of those products that, that you probably benefit from, but you didn't <laughs> know it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And in the automotive space, it's the piece that manages the safety certified layers of data coming off of sensors in the car. And so fundamentally what we're doing with Ivy is we're up leveling that information. Today, if you think about a car, you've got 1500 suppliers that are all providing parts into that car, which means that different makes and models have different seat sensors that give you weight in the back you know, seat as an example. And so if if you want to write an application that tries to determine if that weight in the back seat is your dog or not, my dog happens to be bothering me at the moment. <laughs> I can see. That's great. It's yeah. always good to have. That's one of the benefits of working at home, you know? Absolutely. So we'll use him as an excuse here. Um, but if you want to know if that's a dog on the back seat, um, being able to, to then figure out the piezoelectric measurements and the algorithms. Um, means you have to know what sensors are in that back seat, which means you got to write essentially an application per sensor manufacturer, per vehicle make and model. That, that doesn't work. 
So yeah. fundamentally, what Ivy does is it, it abstracts away the differences between the vendors, and then it uplevels information by using machine learning and analytics running in the car to be able to allow a developer to say, you know, API, is there a dog in the car? Like, how simple is that? I don't have to figure out what the weight measurement is. I don't know, have to know if there's cameras in the car or if there's some other way to know if the dog, I just need to ask, is there a dog in the car? And the APIs from Ivy will tell you, yes, no, or I don't know, you know, because sometimes there isn't the technology to know that. And then the application developer can then use that information to build delightful experiences, things that make your dog behave, hopefully, um, things that might help protect them on a hot day, um, you know, in things where you know that if there's a child in the car, you don't play explicit lyrics, if they're fighting in the back seat, you make sure that the cartoons go off until they behave themselves and cartoons yeah. come back on. Uh, there are lots of, of in-vehicle experiences that can be enabled by this, as well as vehicle operations. So, yeah. um, you know, being able to do maintenance, yeah, maintenance, maintenance and all that stuff. Yeah. Selective recalls, making sure that only cars that are actually affected need to come in and making sure that, that, you know, that's, that's quantified and that, you know, it is actually safe to drive to the point of recall. All of that can be done on a vehicle by vehicle basis. So are you competing with car companies now? No. Um, fundamentally the OEMs are the, are the companies that, that the, the car manufacturers are those that end up um, delivering this capability and they own the data. You know, this isn't something where BlackBerry or AWS owns the data, the auto manufacturers do. So it's their platforms to make a delightful experience out of. Um, we're just helping to make sure that that's as easy as possible and opening up, you know, the potential innovation so that it's, you know, it's certainly their developers internally, but if they want to take advantage of the millions of AWS developers, now they can do that. Sarah, great to have you on. One of the things I, I just want a final question or final point let's get your reaction to is that it seems to me with the cloud in this post COVID scale era, when you start to get into edge, um, you know, industrial IOT, you know, you hear things like instrumentation, supply chain, these are buzzwords. These are kind of characteristics uh, all kind of in play. But the other observation is partnerships are more co-engineering co-development vibe. Is that, just unique to what you're doing? Or do you see this as kind of as a template uh, for partnering? Because when you start to get these abstraction layers, the heavy lifting can be under the covers. You have this enablement model. What's your quick take on this? Yeah, I think we talk about undifferentiated heavy lifting a lot at Amazon. Um, and fundamentally that's different for each industry. Uh, Andy talked about that in his keynote. And so I think, you know, you'll see more and more um, co-development and co-engineering coming from, from companies across land, we have big technical challenges and these are complex problems to solve. It takes a village. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Sarah Cooper, thanks for coming on. GM of IoT Solutions at AWS. Two great success stories, the Carrier and BlackBerry. Uh, one automotive with BlackBerry, it's operating system that powers the safety in for cars and hopefully future application development. And Carrier with the cold connected chain delivering perishable goods, vaccines and food, changing the game. That's a game changer. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Always good to see you. Okay, CUBE coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. Stay with us for more coverage throughout the day and all the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.